So this is the parallel interface board that is in that uh, CNC 6040 machine. And uh, this is going to be what we connect the limit switches up to uh, when we're upgrading this machine. And the switches connect right up here into these holes. And you have uh, the ground all the way to the right here, and then these other three holes uh, are for each axis. Uh, it, whenever you ground them out, it should stop the axis from moving. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to solder in a Molex connector and we will see if that's going to work for so us. So another thing that we're going to be changing out is this VFD that came with the CNC machine. Um, there's a couple reasons. For one, if you saw my video, uh, my CNC 6040 review and rant, um, I talked about this thing overheating and having issues. Um, but we were playing around with it earlier and decided to let out its magic smoke and popped and you can see right back here some and we don't we can't find any trace of what actually came off there but something popped off right here um, which is just as good because I was wanting to scrap that out and we are going to be replacing it with a VFD that we had laying around uh, the last one was rated for 750 watts and this one is rated for uh, 1500 watts so it should power our spindle much better without shutting off, uh, as well as give me a bit better readout, um, you know, rather than just the, uh, the uh, frequency the drive is running at, you know, it'll give us the uh, rotation and the uh, amperage coming in as well. Um, I will go ahead and update you once I get this in and we get those uh, limit switches put in and we'll see how it okay, works. Okay, so we had gotten everything wired up here. As you can see, we got the VFD wired up. Now, there's no like real logic being go uh, routed to this VFD because I'm still using the old parallel port control board. Um, I do plan on upgrading that uh, to a USB control board. I got a couple. I found a couple online that I've been looking at. Um, they're not really cheap because I want the software to come with it. Uh, so I haven't gotten it yet. Um, in the meantime, obviously, I have to run these wires differently. Um, but I need a Molex connector to wire in the uh, limit switches into that control board. Uh, that'll make it pretty easy whenever I get the new control board to just disconnect and reconnect these switches up. Uh, chances are what I'll end up doing is putting a Molex in the back here, um, or a pass-through of some sort to have it come here. Um, let me go ahead and turn this on. Everything else is the same, still using a uh, 220, 24 volt power supply. Because um, this was a 220 VFD. Uh, I, would, I did at one point want to get everything switched over to 120, but these VFDs aren't cheap. Uh, so I'm not going to see myself swapping this thing out anytime soon unless I absolutely have to. Uh, but uh, let me go ahead and show you if whether or not this CNC machine can home itself out now. Need to test out this new VFD.
looks like we're getting about 11,500 RPMs. And then another good thing is, I mean, it, it's all pretty bulky right now. Um, I did find, though, that this VFD will drop inside of this case. Uh, the only thing stopped me is this um, emergency button here. Um, if, I move, if I make a new faceplate, which I happen to have a CNC machine to do, um, and I move this switch and this button over to this side above the power supply, the uh, VFD will drop right in. And I'm going to mount this screen that it comes with on the front so that way I can control it kind of like the old VFD was. Uh, but that is it for now. Uh, I'll go ahead and get some more video taken once I get everything put together and a bit more finalized. Uh, it's just kind of in this manner uh, right now for testing.